Welcome in once again for another edition of Where the 99 Lead. I'm Andrew Joyce, your host, and Where the 99 Leads. It's a program brought to you by the University of Pikeville. We talk all things regarding the University of Pikeville. Academics, athletics, study abroad programs. Uh, we have programs from the Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine, uh, certain departments of the university, certain colleges. And today we step back to athletics and joined once again by the University of Pikeville Athletic Director, Dr. Reggie Overton. Welcome back on. Well, thanks for being here. I just told you the story. I got lost. I've been up at EKB, went down to Pike TV. It's the first time I've met in the Walters rooms. Uh, out of studio <laughs> today and in the Walters room on the University of Pikeville campus, a beautiful part of campus. And uh, the best part about our shows coming to you from the University of Pikeville campus I have more opportunity to be around students, and of course that keeps us younger. Right, you get this good lunch up here we have every day in the cafeteria. Too. Absolutely. <laughs> also uh, a guest on today's show, Dan White, one of the newest members of the University of Pikeville family, assistant athletic director and sports information director at the University of Pikeville. Welcome in. Well, thanks a lot, and this is different. SID is supposed to be the one asking the question, so being in front <laughs> of the camera, is a, that's a new one, but you know. It's great to be here. You, you get the experiential learning of <laughs> being on both sides of uh, the fence. Uh, Dr. Overton, uh, we met last. Uh, you were a new member of the Upike family. Right. Yeah, I guess it's hard to believe, but that's been two and a half or longer years ago. Remember when I had a full head of hair? Uh, you may have, and, and, <laughs> and mine was dark. <laughs> and uh, that has changed as well. But let's talk about uh, Dr. Reggie Overton, uh, some background information and how you arrived at the University of Pikeville. Well, it, it, two and a half years have been a very pleasant experience. It has passed by, as you know, very quickly. We've been through a lot of change uh, and for the good. For the good, we're looking forward to bigger and better things. But just, I don't want to talk a lot about myself. I mean, I'm I'm glad to be here. I was at Virginia State for uh, ten years and got a call from Dr. Hurley and and, and uh, Governor Patton uh, asking if I would like to be the the AD here at Pike Bull. And and I would distinctly remember I said, well, Governor Patton, let me think about it. And he said, Well, call me back in thirty minutes. So it was really from that point on, it's really been very quick, quick pace, and, uh, uh, and I'm glad to be here. I really am. It's been, uh, the community has uh, welcomed me with open arms, and, and hopefully uh, I've, I've done them proud. I know that some great people will work here, and I've formed some great uh, friendships. And, and last week when we went to Moorhead, it was kind of bittersweet because, as you know, I was teaching there for six years. Sure. And to go back and see old friends and, and, and that type of thing meant a lot to me. And they, they treated us with first, first class all the way. And uh, we got it out of there with a victory, which was very important for us. You completely understand the excitement on the University of Pikeville campus with your first encounter with Governor Patton. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, near his arrival, excitement arrived at the University of Pikeville. And you learned when Gov asked something, uh, he expects an answer. And he expects the same answer that... Uh, he has prepared and uh, you fell in and, and here we are. You don't want to talk a lot about yourself, I will. Uh, you're in your third year as athletic director at the University of Pikeville. Degrees from uh, Middle Tennessee State, uh, the U.S. Sports Academy and Auburn with a doctorate from Temple University. Yes. You've also worked with the uh, uh, Olympic Committee, uh, international sports consultant. Uh, utilized by the Beijing Olympic Committee to deliver presentations. So uh, quite a resume uh, here and now our athletics director at the University of Pikeville and we're seeing our athletics the pro the programs grow uh, since your arrival as well, adding some new sports. Well, I'm proud of, of, of all of our coaches here. Uh, they do a tremendous job, their, their staff, and I think we're solid right now. Across the board, I think you'll see an improvement. Uh, not only athletically in our, in our uh, standings when they're the Mid-South Conference, which, by the way, is the, probably the toughest conference, Dan, in, in, in the country, uh, but also academically, and I'm very proud of that. Uh, we've added uh, lacrosse, sure. and that's a new sport uh, not only to Pikeville but to the community in the region, and, and we have a great young coach in Allie Jost that's uh, recruiting and, and getting out there. And as you know, when you, when you, when you bring a sport to an area that – it's really not a high school base where we have lacrosse. It's sure. difficult. So yeah. she's been to Maryland, she's been all over the eastern United States recruiting those type of athletes that we need to be successful lacrosse. 
Another school year is upon us. That means that the fall sports seasons are well underway. Uh, tell us about some good things going on this semester with those sports. Well, it would be easy to talk about football. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time on it because it does get the brunt of our coverage now, and, and rightfully so. We're off to 2-0, and o, I think, for the third, maybe the fourth straight year, th no, the third straight year, and hopefully we can continue that this year. Uh, it's Dudley's third year of recruiting, so he's got the type of boys that he wants, and I can see a big improvement uh, on the field with us. So uh, looking to bigger and better things with them. Uh, we have today, and Dan, Dan's here for, for more reasons than one to, to kind of to get me back on path if I give the wrong schedule, but I know that we're playing men's golf at Moorhead State today, and women's golf, I believe, is in London. Uh, very good teams. I mean, the Governor Patton told the story this morning. He won a scramble. And he admitted to Lucy Holman that he won this scramble, and it's, he never admits things too much, but sure. he won because of a, a young player that we have, female player, that, uh, that's very good. And uh, he said she had three eagles wow. in that game. So we're looking forward to women's golf and men's golf. Uh, also, uh, soccer, of course, both soccers are going on, men's, women's soccer. And I'm stealing your thunder right now, Dan, but Dan's our soccer, uh, resident soccer expert. <laughs> But uh, we got a D1 transfer in women's soccer, and she really made the difference the other day, scored two goals for us. So we've improved vastly with that uh, sport. And men's soccer, we got a two-game winning streak, which is uh, we flipped that around, and we got tired of losing. I believe that's a school record. I believe it is. And, and, I believe and it is. we're not making fun of that, but no. I think that just shows the progress that's been made in the program still in its infancy. Right. But now... Uh, talking about a winning streak right. and uh, certainly growth in, in both of those programs, the golf programs as well. And then, of course, I, I know a lot of excitement always around the volleyball program. Right, in volleyball uh, vastly improved as well. We yes. started off with a great uh, match here at home and had great attendance. And tomorrow night at 7, we play our, our closest rival, although they've moved out of the Mid-South and to uh, the Mountain East of Division II uh, in the, in, uh, NCAA. We play Wise tomorrow. Uh, at the gym. So we expect a good crowd there and should be very competitive with them. And you know, we're, it's not going to be long before we move into basketball season. And I said, I think on the sports guys a couple of weeks ago that uh, I will guarantee you there's no other school in the nation that's opening up. Men are opening up against the defending national champion Louisville Cardinals. Right. And the women are opening up the night before against the runner up women lady cards right so we're very proud of that and lucy holman and eric dr eric becker we're trying to organize some special things for the sure. student athletes and alumni and looking forward to that so uh, while those aren't necessarily season openers for those programs a lot of excitement around those is sort of an unofficial kickoff right. to the basketball season because a lot of alumni get together mm -hmm. folks from the community travel to louisville with the men's team over the last couple of years, and wow. uh, it, it's a great way to uh, put a stamp on the start of sure. the season, mm -hmm. uh, even though there may be a couple of games already under the belt. Right. Uh, you're tuned to Where the 99 Lead, a program brought to you by the University of Pikeville. Today, we talk with Athletics Director Dr. Reggie Overton, and uh, new on campus, the Sports Information Director, Assistant Athletics Director, and that is Dan White. Uh, we'll find out more about uh, Dan uh, as the show goes uh, this afternoon and uh, as you're tuned in. Uh, Dr. Overton, there are some new faces on campus. Uh, typically in a small college setting, you'll have new faces. Uh, there are some in the coaching staffs, but also in administration. Dan White's here from Lindsey Wilson taking over the SID position. Let's talk about that. I tell you what, uh, and I don't give Rick Bentley enough credit. Rick's been a, a good friend and, and a good friend to EKB and, and to the community, and now he's a faculty member. Well, Rick told me months ago, he said, you know, I'd like to name my successor. And I said, uh-oh. I said, is it going to be another Rick Bentley? And he said, well, yeah, probably even better. So uh, he mentioned Dan's name, and uh, I contacted Dan and uh, Chris Wells, our conference uh, SID for the Mid-South. This is boss at Lindsey Wilson, sure. and just spoke glaringly. And I always, I, I always said, not only at Pipeville, but all of my previous places of employment, you know when you've made a good hire 
when the previous employer will not talk to you anymore. I, Chris and I were great friends. He wouldn't return my call, so yes. he was mad. We we took an all star right. away, and uh, we're glad to have him here. And 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 he's taking things to a new level. Uh, Rick was old school. I'm old school, but Rick's the new breed. He's the the, the new type of SID and administrator that knows Twitter, that knows Facebook and LinkedIn and <clears throat> doing all the videos with the phones and s things that are way beyond me. Sure. And he s works good with, with, uh, with uh, Bruce Parsons and Lucy's, uh, Lucy's group. So it's, it's really a thrill to have him on board. Absolutely. Talking about some of the new faces on the coaching staffs, I know as uh, the athletics director, uh, <clears throat> those are your hires. And... Well, uh, Sometimes those hires uh, will bite an athletics director uh, in, the, exactly in the toe. Right. And uh, sometimes you're able to stand back and say, yeah, I hired that one. Let's talk about some of the new faces. Well, Jim, Jim Host and I, as you know, Jim uh, is a good friend of mine, and he spoke to us at our athletic banquet back in, in the spring. And he and I both agreed that an athletic director is always known by his personnel, sure. the people that he or she – uh, maintains, hires, or has to terminate. And nothing's been ever true, uh, truer than that. Uh, from Mitch Barnhart to Bill Battle at Alabama and Dave Hart down at Tennessee, if you don't hire good people, uh, it's going to get you. If sure. you hire good people, then you got to worry about keeping them, especially at an institution our size. So I'm proud of our coaching staff. We have got a little bit of stability now. Uh, Dudley's been here going into uh, third year. And Kelly's been here a very long time. Coach McNamee uh, is our newest hire, but sure. she's been here now uh, four or five months and has a good recruiting base for the women's program. And you're, she's going to bring a lot of excitement, a lot of intensity to the women's program. So we're very fortunate to have her. Allie Jost is new with the lacrosse program. Uh, so she's been here back in February, I believe, is when we got this young coach, 24 years old, Former FBI agent, I mean, just really a good lacrosse person, a good and a knowledgeable person. So those are the new people, the old people, and the rest we pretty much maintain. I think we have uh, uh, Ralph Hood, yeah. Ralph Hood, who has helped um, Tim Alderman with the men's uh, tennis program, sure. now is going to take over the women's tennis program, which we need. And he's assured me the other day we have uh, five good players. And I said, well, I think last time I checked we need six. So he's working on getting that sixth and seventh sure. one. So we're, we're doing good, Andrew. The athletic teams at UPike uh, take a lot of pride in athletics, and, and I know you do as well. Whenever I have an opportunity to speak with one of the coaches, they always want to push their grade point average. Sure. All right, all right, here's how we scored last semester. Mm -hmm. Here's how the team finished last year academically. And let's talk about your work on the academic side. One of the newest programs on campus, the sports management program. Let's talk about that. Sport management program, graduate program is doing very well. We have nine graduate assistants. And as you know, graduate assistants uh, really can be the backbone of an athletic program. Sure. Uh, in the old days when I was a graduate assistant, it was toting the water and cleaning the urinals and doing those mundane things that you know, you really shouldn't have been doing, sure. but nobody else wanted to do them. Well, it's got sophisticated now to where the graduate assistants are sometimes, and more often than not, the experts on Twitter and Facebook and organizing team travel and those type of things. So in that graduate sport management program, program we have nine graduate assistants, which for, in all essence, it's still the first year. That's a good start. We would hope, uh, we've talked to Dr. Hurley about this, uh, for it to be self-sustaining and to, to really not uh, be a burden on the University of Pike, but we need to have 20 fannies in the seats. And that's what we're going to recruit. Rick's going to help recruit. Uh, he's teaching in the undergrad portion of the sport management program. So with his local contacts and my contacts, we're going to try to get some more people in the program. But I'm proud. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of, uh, and I say this, I've said it on the sports guys, I say it on the halftime shows, I'm really more proud of our academic achievements and our athletic. The athletics should come because these kids come in and they have pedigree and, and athletically they're talent, talented, but sometimes they need to transfer that over into their studies. And I say this, and, and uh, Lucy can verify this, but more Meg Seidel, Dr. Seidel than anybody, our 
GPAs, overall GPAs for our varsity student athletes are higher than the non-student athletes. Yeah. And not a lot of schools can say that. Sure. Uh, there's competitions among uh, the coaches who's going to have the higher GPA, which is good. You sure. want that. And this year we've, uh, Gary Wolford's our women's uh, soccer coach. Of course, he's uh, almost has his terminal degree and he's our new athletic academic coordinator. So he'll be overseeing the study halls and, and working with Dr. Seidel and making sure that we do things the right way in the classroom. Take it very seriously because uh, as we all know, student athlete, student comes first. Right. And on the college level, if they don't get it done in the classroom, then they won't be there That's to right. participate on the field. Besides that, uh, we're developing our community leaders mm -hmm. Uh, down the road, uh, whether it be in whatever field, sport management, right. uh, the new uh, MBA program, right. the med school, or uh, with the bachelor's degree and going out and becoming important integral members of our community. Uh, the brand of U-Pike Athletics, it's exciting, it's growing, <laughs> it's becoming known. And let's talk about events like the home volleyball opener last week, and then of course last Thursday's uh, football game. Uh, how has the campus and community responded? Oh, it's, it's very exciting to see, and I've said this, and, I, and I've said it a thousand times since I've been here. Going from Pikeville College to the University of Pikeville was a home run in every way. It was the time to do it. It was genius. I don't know if you want to credit Governor Patton or Dr. Hurley or Lucy Holman or, or everybody, but we've had Leslie Combs. Everybody was involved, the community and that really took off and then we have these graduate programs that came about and now professional schools are you know, potentially going to be added all of that played at the right time with the with with Kelly's national championship that sure. year and it really took off when they developed that U Pike brand uh, it's just amazing how that's recognized I have many stories where I've been traveling in the eastern United States and they'll see the, the U Pike logo or the bear and they'll say, oh, Pikeville, I'm from Harlan or I'm from Lexington or, sure. or whatever. So they recognize it. And you saw the video I shot in Thailand. So now they know about U Pike Absolutely. over in Bangkok. <laughs> uh, success on the field and on the court. Right. Uh, the Bears off to a 2-0 and start. The volleyball opener, uh, tremendous excitement it there. It was a great crowd. Uh, I credit Dan for a lot of that, getting the word out. And also for the Moorhead game. Uh, we had a great, uh, I'm going to say we had seven or 800 uh, Pikeville uh, fans there, and it was just an all-around good feeling. Of course, we won, which helps. I mean, it's not many times you can get the check and get on the bus and get out of town, but we right. did, and uh, I'm glad that we can, we can do that, and it has been talked up a lot, and, and winning breeds winning. I mean, people love to win. That's sure. our society. That's the United States, and we want to keep that up, and uh, Hopefully we're doing things the right way. We're stressing how to, to act as young men and young ladies and, and try to be productive citizens. And I know the kids, uh, they're all kids to me, but they think I'm their grandpa and, and they don't want to hear what I say. But really, ultimately, that's what they're here for is it's great to play athletics, but we want to graduate them and let them be productive citizens. Uh, I'm very lucky, uh, and this is not... Uh, an endorsement for our new president, Dr. Hurley, by any means, but to have a president that played athletics and played at Pikeville College and understands mm -hmm. what it means to be a student athlete, sure. and they see how he succeeded and where he is today, that speaks volumes. And when you have a president and athletic director that's on the same page, that's unusual too. So I'm blessed. I have a lot of people. Uh, it's on cruise control now, and what I do, I guess, is, is look at the parameters out there and the obstacles and try to keep us the ship right. Sure. Also, you look to the future. How do you see the athletic program growing in the next three to five years? What's Dr. Reggie Overton's vision for the athletics programs? Well, of course, I want to always improve our GPAs and I want our student athletes to get a great experience. I want us to improve in the, in the President's Cup, which we have. Uh, we finished sixth out of 11 in the conference last year, which is the highest we've ever finished. And by all indications, if, 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 sports is a very fickle, fickle uh, beast, but uh, if we stay injury free and, and we do the things we're supposed to do, we're gonna improve upon that this year. Uh, we're very happy where we are in the conference. There's a lot of movement 
Um, as you know, we've lost our closest rival with Virginia Wise uh, to NCAA Division II, and we've lost our bitter rival, Georgetown, it appears, to NCAA Division II. And we just found out last week that uh, Rio Grande's moving from NAIA Division I to Division II, so we've lost three members of our Mid-South Conference, and there's some concern. There's some, con some concern with that and also some other issues with the NAIA, but we're looking at it. We're going to do what's best for the University of Pikeville. We're happy in the Mid-South. We're one of the founding institutions of the Mid-South Conference, sure. and it's, and, and Dan, when, when Dan speaks, I know he'll say this, coming from Lindsey Wilson, which, by the way, finished second overall in the nation in points. They understand uh, the way athletics is supposed to be ran, and they're a solid member of the Mid-South, and we want to continue to be so. But there are some concerns, and hopefully those concerns will be alleviated. There's a trend currently that uh, small schools in the NAI are making the jump to the NCAA. Do you s foresee more schools taking that route? I don't know what's going to stop the bleeding, for lack of a better term. Uh, the NCAA is... Uh, gone through some changes, as you know, and, and, and they're not without problems. Uh, and that's why, you know, when I consult with uh, various people, I need to make and make sure I do what's right for you, Pike. And right now, not the NCA and the NA are not on very solid ground. Sure. So that puts us in a very precarious position, and we want to do what's right in the best interest of the institution. And again, uh, you know, Andrew, uh, you and I have been around a long time, and I can look at you square in the eye right today and say, we're happy with the NAIA, sure. uh, we're happy with the Mid-South, but there's got to be some improvements and some sure. changes because we're, lo we're losing schools that are top-notch schools. We're not just, uh, and you can help me with the names, Dan, the California schools, uh, the Georgetowns of the world that are winning championships. So that's a big concern, a big concern. A wise person once told me, whatever's not growing is dying. Right. That's and right. Uh, I think that's a concern for the NCAA or the NAI. Right. Dr. Reggie Overton, Athletic Director at the University of Pikeville. And uh, now, Dan White, a native of, uh, or grew up in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky native, U of L graduate, uh, right. pardon us if we <laughs> ho don't hold that against you, uh, spent time at the Big East Conference at the big office, uh, four years at Lindsey Wilson College, one of the premier athletic programs in the Mid-South Conference, and uh, your first job in sports at the University of Louisville, now at the University of Pikeville. We welcome Dan White to campus, and uh, it's our pleasure to have you on Where the 99 Lead. Well, first of all, I just want to say how happy I am to be here in Pikeville. I uh, played basketball 5 a.m. with a group of guys I met here. That's how welcoming the community is. But I wore my Louisville shirt the other day. Yes. Just thought I'd try it out. Uh -huh. Didn't go well. I think I was fouled harder that game than any other game. So <laughs> I'm learning to, you know, sport a little bit of blue. But overall, it's all been orange for me here. There you go. Black and orange, uh, uh, if you go that direction, you'll always be safe. Exactly. Uh, Dan, let's talk about uh, how you arrived at the University of Louisville, at the Big a East office. Let's talk a little background mm -hmm. and how you decided to, to go into a field of sports and uh, sports information administration. Well, my whole family went to University of Kentucky, so it was pretty much decided I was going to go to the Big Blue. Yes. But then a guy named Rick Pitino took over the basketball program around the same time I was getting ready to go to college. And yes. not saying that I just went for the sports, but when you're a sports-minded guy and you have sure. that kind of things going on, you end up there. and. Uh, I always had in my mind I wanted to work around sports. I've always been a person that wants to read a media guide. I was getting them from UK and Louisville when I was eight, ten years old, sure. just divulging those statistics. And uh, from that, I just went into the SID office at Louisville. Uh, Kenny Klein, the director there, one of the best in the business, and I just said, I'll do anything. Let me put out the chairs for press conferences with Coach Patino. Well, the first job I had was putting out chairs for Coach Patino. Yes. So uh, from there, it grew. I did. Uh, I thought I did good work there. They did too. So when they moved to the Big East. Uh, the Big East looking for somebody to come up there and work communications and they said well we have a guy we'd like you to interview him so I flew out there and I think a couple of days later gave me the job and kind of since then it's just been a, a whirlwind of locations and of course Lindsey Wilson in the MSC and now Pikeville. And curious to to learn how it came down. Rick Bentley 17 years as sports information director at uh, Pikeville. I know you, if you're around the Mid-South Conference, you know Rick Bentley uh, because of his time spent mm -hmm. there. When did you find out that the U-Pike SID job was open and 
that you were interested in. Let's talk about some of those contacts. Well, it's been unique. Uh, I met Rick, like you said. You, you don't meet Rick. You know, you're, you're going to meet him sure. at the MSC events. And uh, after coming here and being with him and coming to play these teams in Pikeville a couple times, in the back of my mind, I always said that this was one of the schools that I would leave Lindsey Wilson for. And that says a lot because I was treated very well at Lindsey Wilson. We were having a lot of success. Um, but then at, last year at the MSC softball tournament in Kingsport, Rick kind of in passing said, would you want to move to Pikeville? And I said, what are you talking about? And then he kind of mentioned that there's some things in motion where he may move on to the academic side and he'd love it if I would uh, apply and try to get the job. So it took a lot of thinking and a lot of time to, because my family's closer to Columbia, all those kind of things. But in the end, this was the right career move. And uh, I have a knack for showing up at the right time at places. I don't know what that is. But, you know, at Lindsey Wilson, we won. At Louisville, we won. At the Big East, we had more teams in the basketball tournament ever before. Now I come to Pikeville, and it seems like things are going better than I've ever seen. So I'm not saying it's because of me, but I do have a knack for showing up at the right time. If you are a good luck charm, you're never leaving. Yeah, that's right. We will determine that. Mm -hmm. Dan White, Sports Information Director, SID. It's a term that many people tune in may not be aware of. They may not understand what that means. Yeah. Let's talk about what you do in your work and uh, what's your vision for growth for the UPike brand? Well, I definitely have a tough uh, job as far as titles, telling somebody what I do. When I, when I ask them and they tell me, well, I'm an SID or a Sports Information Director, sure. they're like, well, we don't really understand. Uh, but it's it's a lot of things. It's anything from producing video segments on players to writing stories. Um, but some of the main things are uh, the statistical stuff. So anytime you're going to log on, see live stats or a box score, I'm in charge of making sure that's accurate. And you know, one of the most important things is promoting this brand that's been created. And Lucy over there in the PR office here, I walked into a great situation because everything's already built. I get to use what they've given me sure. and just try to make my own uh, kind of thing from it. But as far as a vision, um, I want to be just like a living, breathing organization as far as our social media, our website, our things we do. And that goes for every sport. I will treat volleyball, soccer, lacrosse just as much as I'm going to treat nice to basketball and football because all the kids here at Pike will deserve it. You should see how hard they work there in the gym because my office has a, a vision into the, into the gym and none of the teams are uh, deserve not to be supported and I'm going to keep doing that. Absolutely. And of course, football, basketball, uh, baseball, softball, major sports, revenue mm -hmm. generating sports. A lot of times they get most of the uh, most of the, the uh, pub. Is it right? No, no, it's not necessarily right, but it's the nature of the beast. Uh, we've seen some of the videos that you've already produced, stand up interviews with uh, players, coaches before, or after practices sure. and games. How have the students responded to that uh, that added attention? Well, that's kind of becoming a standard practice in my profession is uh, it's not just about reading a story, looking at a box score. You want to get the kids in front of a camera. And just like Reggie and I here doing this today and talking to you, it's all good to promote our brand. Well, this time we're putting it in the kids' hands. Sure. So they tell me every time, damn, we're so nervous. You know, just don't be so serious when you ask the question. So I'm trying to liven it up and uh, make them feel good about it because I think people would rather hear from them than maybe read it in a newspaper or whatever. When you're hearing it from one of our athletes talking about how the game went or what they need to improve on, it gives you a new idea of what, what's going on in their lives. Absolutely. Speaking of social media, we've talked about Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, those type of things. It's the, it's the game today. Yeah. Uh, speaking of social media, where can people find what's going on around UPike Athletics at those various different types of media? Well, I made a, I tried to make it a centralized name. It's UPike Athletics. So whether you're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, there's probably a few others uh, that I'm not thinking of. If you search for UPike Athletics, you're going to find that. And there's already some great things we got going on there. And that's things I'm doing, things that my student workers that I have in my office are helping me with. And uh, just go out there, look at UPike Athletics, and you'll always know when we're playing who we're playing, what happened, and some photos and videos from it. Absolutely, it'll blow your Twitter up. You All go. you have to do is follow yep. UPike Athletics, <laughs> and now you know the face behind uh, UPike Athletics. Dan White, welcome to campus, Assistant Athletic Director and uh, SID at the University of Pikeville. It's been our pleasure to meet you, and we look forward to years and years of Dan White around campus. Dr. Reggie Overton, looking forward to a great season. Thanks for all you do. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for having me aboard. You've been to to Where the 99 Lead, a program brought to you by the University of Pikeville, where we talk all things regarding the University of Pikeville, the leading university of Central Appalachia.